Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jeremy Schumacher. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm the Jer in Wellness with Jer. Thanks for checking out my channel today. Today I'm going to talk about a wellness topic. I've been kind of all over the place, um, but sticking to my namesake, Wellness with Jer, we're going to do a wellness topic. So I've given a little bit about my background on why I like comic books and my background in psychology, my background in marriage and family therapy. My wellness background is much more lived experience than anything I've done as far as like schooling. I think schooling obviously plays into it and all of my work is informed through my work in the field of psychology and being at a research institution. That being said, I was an athlete growing up. I played baseball, um, have a messed up shoulder, unfortunate genetics, uh, bad shoulders run in the family. So baseball wasn't a, a thing for me. Uh, that stuck because my shoulder was so garbage and my athletic trainers in high school were garbage. Shout out to all my athletic trainers who are really good at their jobs that I know. So I was a walk-on at University of Minnesota for their men's volleyball club team. I had never played volleyball competitively. I had been around volleyball. Um, my sisters played it. My mom coached it. I did stats for the varsity team while I was in high school. So I was around it. I knew like how rotations worked. And I knew how the game worked, but I'd never played at a competitive level. And so uh, I just kind of rolled in one day because I saw it advertised that they were doing tryouts and made the team, was like hyper athletic at that point in my life, younger and uh, fitter and could jump out of the gym and was pretty quick. Um, lost a lot of that quickness. Vertical's okay, but not as good as it used to be, that's for sure. I used to be able to dunk a basketball without really thinking about it, and that is not a thing I can do in my mid-30s anymore. Um, so I have this background as an athlete that translated into coaching, um, just playing a lot and picking up different networking opportunities, playing with people like in the volleyball world, the community is very small. So getting connected with people from just being like kind of on everyone's sub list and winning leagues, winning tournaments, whatever. Not that I have like this huge championship pedigree. I was like a good player, not like the best in the world. Um, but then I started coaching. I coach, uh, at a lot of different clubs, um, not a lot of different clubs. I coached club for a lot of different years and um, then got the opportunity to coach uh, collegiately, which was awesome and was part of a really successful program. Um, I got to, while I was at the college level, also work with student athletes as a director of student athlete wellness, um, mental wellness. And so have been around athletics a lot in my life in a lot of different areas, both as a player, as a coach, as um, someone doing mental wellness. So it's a big part of my life. I think sports are um, a silly little game that teaches a lot of life lessons. I think sports as this thing that are like billion dollar industries are problematic in some different ways. Um, but overall, I think sports are really great for people. I think it's fantastic exercise. I think team bonding, I think overcoming problems. Um, I think just the teamwork aspect of it alone is great, but obviously social support and a lot of these different things that you can learn and grow and make these lifelong connections that are really healthy with people. So that's kind of where I'm coming at it from a wellness uh, perspective, both what it takes to be like a high level athlete. Um, I've played against and had people on my team who went on to play professionally. I've played with D1 athletes, I've played against them. So like that level of competition, I've done therapy and uh, mental wellness training, uh, mental toughness training with um, you know people who are JV, get cut from their JV teams. And I've done it with people who are going on into the Olympics. So like a really broad range of experiences, both lived experience and then professional experience. So that's kind of my wellness background in a nutshell. Um, so I'm going to do a, a wellness review. I've got it on. Maybe you've seen it in my videos for the Aura Ring. Um, we'll, we'll get some screenshots up. We'll, we'll show kind of how the app works. Um, I got the Aura Ring a, a little over a year ago. Um, so I feel like it's a good time to give a review of it. I think a lot of reviews are like, I've had it for two weeks or um, people who have had it for a couple of months. One of the things just like flat out that I'll say is I feel like it, it took my ring probably about a month to start getting good readings. Um, it says to give it a couple days or a week, um, a couple weeks, I don't remember what, what the app recommends. But um, when I recommend it to people or know people who have gotten it, I've been pretty like, hey, give it like at least a month, maybe even six weeks before it really starts to start giving you good readings and things that you can do it with. Um, so yeah, the Aura Ring is a wearable uh, fitness tracker. I specifically, um, wanted the ring um, because I have uh, sensory issues. So I don't like things on my wrist. I wasn't gonna do like a, a watch or like the Whoop bracelet um, is one that was pretty popular for a minute there. I don't know, I think 
Patrick Mahomes or somebody was sponsoring it. So um, looking at a bunch of different things, doing a bunch of different research, one of the things that for ADHD doesn't get talked about nearly enough, I think, is sleep issues. Um, most of the people I work with who have ADHD are not great sleepers. I am not a great sleeper having ADHD. Uh, I toss and turn. Um, I flip. I'm a stomach sleeper, um, but I do like side, side, flip to my stomach, wake up and I'm uncomfortable, side, side. It's like I'm a, a really like restless sleeper. I'm a very light sleeper as well. I don't think that has to do with ADHD. I think that I don't know if that's genetic or what. Um, I happen to be a light sleeper, and then with my ADHD, I'm pretty pretty terrible sleeper. Um, so after kid number two, I was probably about 30 pounds overweight, um, which doesn't sound like terrible, horrible, awful. I'm six foot three. I can swing 230, you know, like a little bit of a dad bod, but nothing terrible. Uh, but for me, like I could feel it, like my knees hurt, uh, my back hurt beyond what was I felt like reasonable. I know being a high level athlete can put some years on your life, but it seems like beyond reason for me, it seemed to be like negatively impacting my health. So I was like, all right, I got to lose some weight. I got to do some different things. I got to focus on my fitness. I, in a very ADHD, ADHD sort of way through like way too much stuff at it all at once. Um, because that's what you do when you decide something finally and that that uh, break point for decision making is passed that threshold that gets passed so um, I got a, a fitness tracker which was um, step big step uh, step number one for me and I started doing intermittent fasting I'll talk about that maybe in another video I, I it works great for me I don't recommend it for a ton of people um, but so I, I did a couple things. I, I lost some weight. I'm around 200 pounds. I've been there for long enough where I stopped checking my weight ever. Not that health is based on weight. There is no number on a scale that means you are healthy. Just to reiterate that point, I think I've hit that before. But um, for me, I, I was feeling a lot better and that just kind of built for me a range of like where my, my healthy weight looks based on my level act, of activity. But the aura ring was really for me about like tracking my sleep. Um, I wanted something that would be pretty accurate. Uh, it's a wearable on your finger, so it doesn't bother your sleep as much, and you're, it's designed to wear overnight. So you don't have to like charge it overnight. It charges pretty quick and holds its charge for a while. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like it kind of just fits specifically what I was looking for. I'm not well versed in fitness trackers. I'm not somebody who's tried a bunch of them. Aura isn't giving me any money to sponsor this. Um, this is just me being a genuine human being with some experience in this field um, of wellness overall and psychology on top of it. So just kind of being like real with, with this is specifically what I wanted. If there's a tracker that does a thing that you're specifically wanting or that you need different, great. Like if you're training to run a marathon, I don't necessarily think Aura is maybe for you because it's not great from my experience for tracking a specific workout. Um, I used it for that. I have used it for that. It chews through the battery life if you track a specific workout for it. So like even if it's, you know, an uh, hour and a half bike ride, like that's a lot of battery life you use to track that. It gives you good results. It tracks that workout okay. But like do I think it's as good at tracking a workout as I, uh, who have, exper have experience as a high-level athlete, would want it to be? No. Um, I think it's really good data on people who are like trying to get healthier or trying to make a specific change. So one of the things that I didn't expect with Aura that I was tracking with my sleep was how much alcohol affected my sleep. Um, I'm not a huge drinker for a plethora of reasons. One, alcohol is just bad for you. It's a toxic substance for your body. Um, so it's, it's not great for you. I was never a huge drinker. Um, I don't like the sense of like loss of control. There isn't a fun experience for me being inebriated. Um, later in life, I developed vertigo. So beyond being buzzed feels a lot like having a bout of vertigo, which I really detest. Um, but you know, I would have a whiskey on the rocks or I would have a beer, um, after dinner or with dinner, if it's nice out and I'm grilling, it's in Wisconsin. That's what you do. Like you crack open a beer, you fire up the grill, you put some burgers and some brats on there and like you go with it. I don't eat brats. I don't, I'm just lying to you. Um, some hot dogs and some burgers. I know I've offended people already by saying I don't eat brats. I apologize if you're offended at what I choose to eat. Um, but yeah, so the the order ring kind of surprised me with like having one singular beer or having, you know, um, probably like two shots equivalent if I do whiskey on the rocks. Um, two fingers, as they say, um, is what I would like to drink just as kind of like a relax at the end of the day kind of thing. Not every day. I would say pretty sporadically still. Um, 
but the data I was getting from my order ring was like, if I had alcohol before bed, I slept a lot worse, like definitively tracked that that was a pattern for me. And so it was one of those things where I was like, ah, oh, I should really cut back. Like there's no reason for me to be drinking the way that I'm drinking. Like I'm not getting drunk. It's not social lubricant. It's just kind of like, I would say it was mindless. I, I would think of it in terms of stress relief. It was kind of like, a, oh, I'm like, it's been a long day. I'm gonna need to unwind. But it wasn't doing that for me. It was just like, I like beer. I've brewed my own beer for years. I like the the art behind it. I like all the different flavors you can get. I like trying new things. Um, but that's not how I was drinking. It wasn't like um, going on a brewery tour to try a new thing or this new bar opened and they have this specialty drink. It was just like drinking beers that I knew that I liked, that I enjoyed the taste. So not like problematic drinking, but enough to be affecting my overall health. So I definitely cut back with that. Um, started drinking a lot more NA, which uh, I still really enjoy. I it doesn't affect my sleep um, because my body's not processing the alcohol. Um, so I've had the opportunity then um, cutting back on the alcohol to try a bunch of different NA drinks. That's kind of the same thing that I like about um, drinking beer is trying new things, tasting new things, having new experiences. So as much as like going to a brewery and having a new drink is exciting, trying a new NA is also exciting. Um, some of the NAs have definitely been misses. I think it's harder to get that right than it is to have a good beer. But still, like, it's been a thing that um, I talk about. I blogged about dry January and was, like, raving about hoppy refreshers uh, from um, Lagunitas. And that's one of those things that I pronounce wrong. And then once I become aware that I pronounce it wrong, I always forget Lagunitas. People will judge me for this, too. I'm a terrible Wisconsinite right now. Um, don't eat brats and mispronouncing breweries. Just a real shame. Um, I had to look up how to pronounce aura correctly because of how it's written and, you know, I don't know how to pronounce umlauts or whatever it is. I think it's not even a, a pronunciation thing. It's just stylized. I will say, Aura, while I'm reviewing you, um, it's a Swedish company, so they can spell it however they want. It doesn't need to be beholden to English. But when you say Aura out loud, that makes it sound like a very fancy um, mood ring. That's how people who are unfamiliar with the company always think. Like, is that like a new age like mood ring thing? Kind of, right? It's tracking your health, which affects your mood. A very new age uh, mood ring. But anyway, I'm very off topic now. So um, yeah, tracking my sleep actually helped me cut back on uh, how much I drink and be more intentional with drinking and just kind of being like, you already know the psychologist in you who works with people who have to cut back on drinking or reevaluate their relationship with alcohol or are interested in being sober, sober curious. Uh, sober adjacent, whatever it is, like that's been a big part of my work because of regionally where I work and how big drinking is here. So uh, kind of one of those things that I knew, but without having the data that I got from my ring, I wouldn't have maybe made that decision. Also cutting back on how much you drink very much helps you lose weight. Uh, but I was already at my goal weight by the time I think that I was getting good readings from that. Intermittent fasting helped me cut weight pretty fast. Um, separate topic, gang. Trying to stay on topic here. So the aura ring, like that data was really helpful. Um, I think overall it's been really good for me to like get into a healthier routine and routines are hard for me to maintain as far as having ADHD. So this is kind of gonna be like a little bit of a rant on lower importance or lower talked about society thinks they're less important um, symptoms of having ADHD. But like one of those things that helps ADHD is definitely exercise. Like we know through research, diet and exercise help people who have ADHD. If your body is working well, your brain works better. Those are good ways to manage it without or with medication. Um, medication messes with those things. So that's where it gets a little tricky. But so it's one of those things where it's like, you can't just say to every single mental health issue, like go to the gym, because it's hard to stick to a gym routine when you have ADHD. It stops being stimulating at some point, and so constantly working out in a new and exciting way isn't always a viable option. So having the ring to kind of track that stuff for me has been helpful, it's been motivating for me specifically. I was always really great about working out when I was part of a sport or in a team, not necessarily for the social aspect, just because it was a requirement or was expected. So I kind of built my schedule around it. Um, so having something tracking my fitness has been helpful for that. I think the readiness score is a super easy and convenient way to kind of summarize how your overall health and wellness is being. Um, I think there are times where if my, my score has been low that um, it's recommended rest, which is two thumbs up, great, love that. But also kind of knowing my body um, from being a high level athlete for so long being like, 
yeah, no, like I actually need to work out today. That's what's going to make me feel better. Um, and that's usually been borne out by like the next day's reading being like, yep, yeah, you're back on track. Seems like you're making healthy choices. So I like the readiness score. I think um, being body aware and kind of knowing some of it, you can you can do different things with the score. It doesn't mean I ignore the readiness score. If it says to rest, I try and build other stress relief or rest activities in addition to my workout rather than just not working out. But again, I think that's one thing that, that for me was kind of built in already for my background and also was borne out with the data in that I was getting from the ring. Um, so the sleep score is super helpful. Um, I have gotten COVID since I had the ring and uh, my scores dipped significantly I would say 20 more than 24 hours before I did got my uh, positive COVID test so the ring was reading like I was sick and I've also had the flu um, and the ring was reading that too so um, the two times I've had an illness different illnesses the ring has alerted me to that before my body necessarily felt it so I think like that's really interesting and fascinating I think that's a pretty cool thing um, it does like um, ovulation tracking now, which I don't recommend depending on what state you live in in the United States because I don't know why we're barreling backwards into the 1950s, but I don't necessarily think a, a private company having that data is super helpful depending on what state you live in. So be aware of that, I guess. Um, other things I really like about it, um, it charges really fast. It holds its battery life with the caveat of if you're tracking your heart rate during workouts, that does chew through the battery. I think I have to charge it maybe once every five, four or five days, depending on my usage. Um, I've gotten into a good routine with logging in and letting it update, but having ADHD sometimes does, I think, make it harder for me to be in routine. So I'm not a super habitual person with a lot of things. Um, so I've kind of tried to tie it with like waiting for my coffee to brew in the morning, which I am very habitual about. Um, as my coffee's brewing, I usually log into the app so that it updates and I get my sleep score right away. Um, but I think opening the app a couple times throughout the day helps your um, updates your data more quickly. So I like that. Um, I'm not the most tech savvy person, but the app's super easy to use. Um, sometimes I have issues with the Bluetooth connecting. Um, I have that issue across the board. I This is a weird thing to put on a, a YouTube video. I have like weird, I think, body magnetism. I don't know, like street lights go off when I'm around and there's some other things. Key fobs, magnetic things don't always work well around me. Um, not that it's like a superpower or like it'd be the dumbest superpower in the world. It just, there's something weird about the way that my body interacts with some of that stuff sometimes. Uh, not claiming any scientific knowledge or backing on that. It could be total coincidence. Um, but yeah, sometimes either I have too many things logged, um, connected to my Bluetooth or sometimes so, but usually it's just turning my Bluetooth, Bluetooth on and off again that will connect the ring right away. So that's maybe one of the only downsides with it. Um, my ring was 300 bucks, um, which is a big price for a lot of people. Um, at the time that I got it, it was a significant investment. Um, it was like Christmas and then some. Um, so it was one of those things that like I was pretty serious about as far as my fitness goals were going and where I wanted to be in life. If my ring were to break or get lost and I couldn't replace it, like would I get another one? I don't know. Um, I think it's really served its per purpose as far as evaluating like where I'm at in my um, health journey and what I wanted to be doing at this time in my life. I think it's nice just for like keeping your data up. I love the data I get from my sleep scores. It gives you weekly updates. You can look at over a month to track your overall trends. And that's really how I think about health and fitness. It's not like a day-to-day -day thing. It's it's where you're trending, what does it look like? So I like that stuff. I think it's super helpful um, and intuitive information. I don't know that it's like going to get you healthy if you're not invested in being healthy already. Like it's not like giving you workout plans or stuff like that, but they're adding more and more information on some of that stuff. They're adding um, a lot of different like meditation things. And um, I listen to them occasionally. Usually I'll fall asleep to like um, some like neo-folk gothic black metal stuff that wouldn't be what normal people would fall asleep to normal um or i listen to like folk metal to fall asleep more often than not but um they have guided meditations for sleep i've used those they have gratitude at the end of the day i like that one um so they're adding more and more of that inform um, information slash like 
playlists, sessions, whatever you want to call them. And I think that's really great. They have guided uh, breathing techniques in the app. So that's that information is really great. And then that can track what your breathing is doing, what your heart rate is doing, your heart rate variability. So there's a lot of good stuff in the app. There's a lot of good stuff that comes with the ring. So for me, like 300 bucks was worth it. They've added a subscription since I got mine. Um, I was grandfathered in for a while. I do think I'm paying the subscription now. This is how terrible I am with money. Um, not terrible with money. It's money is not a way that I orient around my life. Being in a society uh, that orients around money is stupid. So um, it's an investment, and if the I think the subscription is maybe like six bucks a month. So, but like again, for me, I, I like the data. The data is very useful for me. I went to a research u university. I did a lot of research. I like the data. The data is data is meaningful to me. Um, but if you're not like a psych nerd like I am, I think just like your basic scores are still really useful. So if you're somebody who's like trying to get healthier in a very specific way, and this is a tool that can track that way for you, I think it's totally worth it. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I've recommended it to people when I've heard from them that they're looking for a certain thing that I think the ring can do because I've, I've had a really positive experience with mine. So I like it. I like the app. I like the ring. I like that it's wearable. I don't like having jewelry even with my sensory issues. You can see in a lot of pictures of me. You can't. I'm not putting them out and about. But um, if you ever came across it, you'll still see I've been married for over a decade and I still play with my wedding ring constantly. So I don't love having stuff on me. I still play with the ring occasionally and sometimes it's bothersome. Um, but like for the most part, it's, it's forgettable enough. Um, where in a way that for me personally, I don't like having stuff on my wrist. It's very sensitive for me. So it's been great for that. And it's been great for the sleep stuff, which is really why I got it. So it's very much served its purpose. Um, it's very much been a useful tool for me in getting healthy. And I think for people who are looking for a specific thing that the ring does well, it's a great investment. So if you're interested in that, definitely um, check it out and think about getting one. If you're interested in getting healthy, like, hey, do it. Pick something that you are going to be able to focus on for a while and get whatever tools, whatever support you need in that thing to do it well. That is what makes us healthy in a long term. You're not going to get healthy in every single way, shape, and form across the board, but piecemealing it together, doing things in sequence, I think is the best way to do it. So focus on your sleep, focus on your diet, focus on your exercise. Don't try and do all those things all at once. You won't stick to it. Pick one, get better at it, and then add to it once you've already made progress. Uh, hopefully this video was useful. Hopefully it was interesting. Like, subscribe, do those youtube -y things. Or not. Again, I don't super care. Uh, but thanks for stopping by. Peace.